Hello and welcome to another live code hangout. Today we will try to wrap up this little experiment using design patterns to make our code more observable. I'm parsing some HTML from a rich text editor and a content management system. I want to make sure that this HTML comes across into Python without losing any important information, and then subsequently gets saved into the database without any loss, any significant loss. Some things like formatting or some attributes might not carry over, or other unsafe HTML might get filtered out by the rich text editor in our new content management system, Wagtail CMS. But generally, I want to make sure all the content images, pull quotes, all of that comes over safely. I was having a bit of troubles with opaqueness, mainly when handling media blocks. I would like to refactor the code to be a bit more basic and transparent using just strings that I can in inspect and compare and a generic struct that I can tell myself what's going on and use in a factory method to assemble an actual wagtail CMS block and based on the content type. I've gotten some help here from GPT-4. It's introduced me to the factory and adapter patterns. Uh, or we might use a builder pattern, although I'm trying to be consistent, have a common interface so that my code can be concise, even though the block types, rich text and image and block quote will have differing content and differing, uh, some differing semantics. The internal representations of the image and block quotes are going to be well, I think the image at least is, I have to take the image bytes, download the image, and um, put it into a, a wagtail image block. Rich text and block quote are pretty straightforward. One reason why I'm doing this is so that I can possibly introduce other blocks, like embeds. I forgot about those. Embeds are another type of block where I lose some visibility into the content. I have an, a URL, like uh, a YouTube video or Vimeo. And I want to make sure that that video URL comes across the, the barrier. If I can check that as a plain string, then I need to instantiate an embed block, which does some more advanced um, work to fetch the video and generate an embed tag, which I can sort of inspect. Anyway, first step, I want to make sure I've got everything over and they're in the right sequence. That's another thing I forgot to mention is I'm splitting these out into a list that's essentially the skeleton, the skeletal structure of the page or post or however you would call it. In Wagtail, we call them pages. Then we're reassembling that skeletal structure, we're fleshing that out as a stream field, which is a collection of content specific blocks. There needs to be an intermediary step here because this should be singular. As I just mentioned, it should return actually a block. Um, if I have multiple image URLs, then we'll need to create multiple blocks. Each image has its own behavior and alignment and properties that what we'll do is here. And this already is singular. I don't want to get too messy here. Thank you. 
well this is a simple improvement so at the point this is a curation decision but basically do i want to check out the any other attributes on the images I, at this point i don't th don't think so i just want the image source so that i can download that and save it to the database i think it takes an item string also let's double check thank you to my pie for helping keep me safe with passing things around and not having to having to juggle all those types in my head i can just inspect it and see what i'm expecting a string type gives me a list of strings yeah very cool i will iterate over this whoops there we go and then thank you copilot for making my brain uh, make my work a little bit easier helping my brain focus Oops, let me double check the multi-stream chat. This it should show up in the video, but if I don't open multi-stream, I lose messages. Yeah, and let me just double check this implementation here. Then I can write a nice concise test here. It's gonna find them all. It's gonna parse the block content, which would be like a paragraph that contains uh, usually one image, but it, it could be a case, I don't know, but where there are two images embedded in a paragraph or a div. I don't have that much visibility into all of the content. These rich text editors seem like CK editor. They seem pretty consistent. I think they mostly produce flat output but I haven't gone over the content, you know, on a granular level to find all the edge cases. I don't even know how to describe it to Copilot, but if I open up the other file, this shared I, without myself looking, can Copilot use, it will look at your open tabs, it'll look across context, apparently. Can I have Copilot ask Copilot to write this? Something like download. Uh, yeah, so here we go. if it suggests anything else. No, that's pretty good though. That's essentially the sequence, so Copilot knows that much. Well, that URL is probably an important one, and especially I'm gonna wanna check for a prefix. What else does Copilot suggest? Any other steps? No? All right, so now I'm going to just do this. At this point, I might as well be copying and pasting my own thing here. There we go. I just needed to kind of give it a little bit more prompting. Let's see. Yes. Mm -hmm. just looking for this slash and taking the last element of the URL. Space. Now it's basically able to use my code in the other tab. Help me out here. So yeah, we have, the image file gets persisted to the database and needs a file name so that it's just one of the required fields. Then we parse it to an actual block. This is the wagtail block that gets inserted in the body. Actually, I'm mistaken here. The image file is the raw file. Somehow the image is what gets saved in the database, as we can see on this line. So I don't quite... Uh, yeah, so now we're using a, a bespoke block. But basically all I need here is... Um, this is a bit wrong, but... Oh, 
I'll do this at a higher level. When I construct stream field content, it's essentially a list of tuples where the first item is the block type and the second item is the block content. I need to decide at what level of abstraction I'm going to construct this tuple. I think I'll do it in the outer loop is what this factory is doing. Returning a tuple with the block type and in the block content where a factory creates the block content. So in this case, all I need to return is this dictionary of, with, uh, or this struct with the properties uh, that have been defined in this formatted image chooser struct block. It's just a way of adding extra attributes and it gives us some, the reason I defined that is so we could have control over the display width. The default image chooser block doesn't uh, have a, an interface for specifying the width automatically just generates that uh, the editor would like to be able to control display width yeah so this is some couple hoops i have to jump through for an image file object i don't have to really understand those details to understand what i'm trying to achieve here but they're there in plain sight if i need them okay do we have a linting thing going on here what's this yellow squiggles what are these Uh, Wagtail image block, that's kind of a little bit of important context. I suppose I could check my imports and see that this comes from Wagtail. I think it's just from Wagtail. Dot blah. Ooh, images, models, import images. Okay. Image instance. So I have that here. Uh, mistaken there. Create and save. And, you know, these could be chained, but I'll just pop those together. So it's kind of like a paragraph. I don't have to, uh... Create a proper dictionary with the properties of a format image user struct block. That's a bit of context that is, is missing here. I can see the dictionary has some properties, but I don't know what they are. So that's another example of why comments can be helpful. Give me a little bit of broader context. Is YouTube having some troubles with audio? Is my YouTube stream? I think this is be an image file. Let me double check. I'll check the other code here. Copilot has got me 80% of the way, 90% of the way this time. Let's see, we're doing this. Um, living the dream, enjoying a relaxing day of Python, Wagtail development. So combination of these tools make you, make me more confident and avoid all these little mistakes that I'm constantly making you know we are imperfect and that's the way we learn and grow is from our mistakes the thing is they get a bit annoying when i'm trying to think at multiple levels i'm trying to think overall what's the strategy i'm trying to write with this code or even where's the project going and then down to the level of how does the framework work how does the language work the semantics you know forgetting to return all these kind of things the code uh, uh, tooling can help with Yeah, actually, that's right. Yeah. Wow. If this is it, parse body blocks becomes this. That is really cool. You're literally just parsing the body as blocks and then abstracted the most of the logic. Hmm. 
But I've certainty up to that point. That things are behaving as expected. We're losing a bit of visibility with these crate blocks because the blocks vary. As we can see from the factory method, there's different types that have um, you know, different visibility. This image block is an example where we have some internal structures and file bytes that are a little bit harder to test against. But now I, that I have this singular function, I can, it's, it's uh, Perform only one operation, takes it regular input and has a few known behaviors. This actually should try. Try that. And I'm just going to raise naked, or whatever you would call that, so I get the trace back. Uh, this is what GPT-4 taught me. So Copilot is probably picking up on a convention that you raised the, the named exception. It's probably from my own code where I've been doing that. And I learned the subtlety of Python exceptions that if you just raise, it'll convey more of the context, the internal context, specifically the trace back. So you can see what went wrong, where. I don't know if the traceback would be so useful when I've got a meaningful log message, but nonetheless. I think it just takes the generic block. Let me opt it there. Hmm. That makes sense. That was Copilot, I think. Taking a good guess there. Block equals generic blocks. Oh, that way it's consistent. Hmm. All right, so now, <laughs> good thing we got these tests because this is mind boggling. Now we're gonna run Python, manage py test. We're gonna specify content migration, e and t, uh, dot, uh, management, commands, dot, test, uh, conversion. Seven tests, simple tests, so they should be fast. Fast. So we'll go ahead and commit the changes to conversion pi. And test conversion. I'll go through this again and make sure we've got uh, tests for each of these. Yeah, they just take string and do the thing all internally. So that's a lot easier to test now. Very good. All right. And we will continue with uh, shared tests and a bit more of this refactoring. Hopefully I'm really close. I don't want to spend too much time on refactoring when I'm really just needing to move the project forward. In a way, these content importers are throwaway code. But they're vital. They're mission critical. So I want to make sure that the code works correctly.